Welcome back, guys. Yes, we are here. We are here, and we are finally going to be talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. Now, I want to go ahead and I want to talk about this. We are going to be getting into spoilers. should be in the title. So, for those of you that seen the movie, you want to hear what I got to say, stick around. If you don't, that's fine. But at the same time, spoilers ahead. There's a lot to talk about, and I don't even know where to begin. But, but before I even get any further, let me go ahead and say this. Huge, huge thank you. To Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman pulling off not only a magnificent performance, but a badass performance. Um, so here we go. You guys got your chance. One, two, three. Now we're going to be in spoilers. So the entirety of the film, which again, it makes you go into one area because Wade is basically doing the same thing he did in Deadpool 1 with fighting off TVA guards and then talking about what happened and what occurs is we think as an audience we think okay is it because you know what you did Deadpool 2 but at this point you know he's trying to join the Avengers he doesn't then he loses Vanessa and it's his birthday he's working at a dead-end job he's working with Peter and then the TVA shows up at his birthday party he gets taken to, to the TVA and he thinks oh it's because I messed with time surprisingly no it's not he got taken out of his time because apparently the higher-ups in the TVA now that it's been taken over from especially the ones in Loki that he is going to be uh, a significant role. Don't know exactly what yet, but the one that takes him explains to him that his universe is dying because of Logan, aka you know Hugh Jackman, that Wolverine, and that he has to um, say goodbye to his universe. He doesn't accept it, so that's when we see him fighting um, the TVA guards with the Logan exoskeleton, and that was just a badass fight, man. And seeing him perform Bye 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 by NSYNC. Guys, this was literally a millennial movie. I'm going to say that right now. This this was a millennial movie all the way. Because not only was it the music in here. Because we had, you know, Hell's Bells for the Deadpool Wolverine fight. Because, again, he goes to mul different, mul you know, multiverses. We see Henry Cavill as freaking Wolverine, dude. And that was amazing. Got to see him, like, two, three different Wolverines. We got to see like an old kind of like cowboy Wolverine. We got to see One Patch Wolverine, Apocalypse Wolverine, Wolverine versus um, Hulk was amazing. Wolverine on the cross, you know, from the comics. That was awesome. Seeing just all these different things that they did, you know, taking a lot from the comics. And then finally seeing a Wolverine that we later find out that unfortunately he killed all the X-Men in his universe because he was, he, I, I can't remember if it was a bit of rage or because he was controlled, but either way, he blamed himself and that's the reason why he always wore a suit and that's when Deadpool even brings him back to the TVA. It's not going to fix it. And then they prune them, take them to the void, and that's when we see the fight between Deadpool and Wolverine, which was, I think, badass. I mean, that was something a lot of people, we've been wanting a, like a redo since origins again you can give crap to origins all you will but it's still a decent movie in my opinion but then of course we see all the former x-men villains show up and we get our first cameo of chris evans as freaking human torch i think that was cool again i was not the biggest fantastic four fan uh in the early days but again i did enjoy seeing chris evans return as the human torch i think that was a fun little treat and then seeing the Sabretooth versus Wolverine fight, I will say I liked it, but at the same time, I had issues with it because it was so quick. It was just like a one and done, him slicing you know, his head off, and the next thing you know, boom, it's just done. It was like, whoa, 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 wait, that's it? Like, it was just that quick. And then seeing, you know, Ray Park return as um, Toad, seeing, you know, uh, all the X-Men villains, you know, um that we've seen in X-Men 1, 2, United, Juggernaut, uh, Fyro. We got to see, you know, um, all these other ones, even the other X-Men movies. And so they get taken to Cassandra Kane, a.k.a., you know, Professor X's sister, which, again, I did not too, know too much about this character, and apparently she's been there in the Void ever since. And then when they are talking, she does kill the um chris evans cameo for human torch and then right when it seems like she wants to take them out they actually do escape and we see where 
um, Ryan Reynolds even tells, you know, Wolverine, like, hey, you know, the reason why I'm here is because, again, I need your help to take on my universe so that way I can save it. And because you were a hero, you were the X-Men, and they do run into an alternate version of Deadpool, which surprisingly has no healing factor. I don't see the reason why they had this version of Deadpool. It almost looked like he was the Witcher version of uh, Henry <laughs> Cavill, which was hilarious. I think that's maybe what they're going for. And we got to meet Dogpool, which I think Dogpool the entire time wanted to go with the prime version of Wade Wilson, which again can easily be seen. There was like two scenes, two main scenes with Dogpool, which was hilarious. And then them again, Wolverine and Deadpool have like maybe like two, three fights in the film. And there was one in the car, which was absolutely hilarious. And there's a lot of Easter eggs in this film, especially with different, you know, things that both actors have done since their times as both Deadpool and Wolverine. And one of the things I found funny was, you know, the different music in here. There's a lot of music for millennials in here. And then we get to one of the main things, which I love, man. We got to see them unite with a lot of former ones man we got to see jennifer garner return as electra we get to see daphne king return as x-23 which we did see in the trailer but the two main things i don't think a lot of people saw coming until we did one of the main things i rose up man seeing wesley snipes return as blade was incredible seeing him return as blade Especially of how much I love the Blade movies. I was like, holy crap. We are finally here, dude. Then we got to see uh, fan casting. What people have been wanting for years. For Chang Tatum to be Gambit. Which I think he did a good job on. I will give him credit on that. There's even a line. There's a lot of lines in here about characters. That either were already destroyed. Or they try to go up against Cassandra. Like they brought up Magneto. She took him out. Um, and then some others. And then apparently the Punisher. So I'm assuming the Punisher. There was two different Punishers. You had Ray. Um, not Ray Park. You had um, Punisher Warzone. Then you also had. The Punisher with Thomas Jane, which I'm assuming that could have been the version they were talking about. And even they brought up Daredevil, and they dissed Daredevil. It was mainly Jennifer Garner dissed Daredevil, which was Ben Affleck's Daredevil, which was hilarious. And then we get to see how the reason they were taken away from their universes because th their universes were dying for some reason. And then next thing you know, you see that they've been here. Gambit said he's been there from the entirety, you know, that he knows. Same thing with Cassandra, that she's been there the entire time. So pretty much... They're using the void in this uh, movie in, quote-unquote, the garbage of the MCU. Now that MCU has taken over Fox 20th Century, uh, Century Studios, it's like, hey, we're going to take all the crappy characters that we think are crappy characters, and we're going to put them in the void, and we're going to put them here. And I will say, again, the main fight between... you. All these different things between them taking out all the former X-Men villains was absolutely awesome. But I'm going to say this. The two main things that made me smile was seeing Blade blow up the opening to the Ant-Man. And then him saying there's, always, there's only one Blade. Which again, all the issues that we've had with the Blade movies so far before it's even come out just says right there. Let him come back. I'm just going to say this. Let the man come back. We got to see this badass fight with Gambit, with Elektra, with Blade, X-23. Just let him come back. It's not hard. Because we even see him make a comment of him saying, you know, one's always trying to uh, ice skate uphill, just like we heard in the first film when he went up against Deacon Frost, which was awesome. Seeing Gambit actually look comic book correct, which was awesome. X-23, you know, gave the other Logan, the confidence to be able to forgive himself and continue. And then the same thing with them fighting against Cassandra Cain, then going back to their world. And then Cassandra was wanting to take over the part of the TVA that was corrupted. So that way she could destroy all the universes. And then that's when all the Deadpools come and we see like lay Deadpool. We see cowboy Deadpool. We see baby Deadpool. We see teen Deadpool. We see all these Deadpools and we finally get to see the badass scene of Wolverine actually putting on the mask and just going all out with Deadpool. And it was badass, man. Seeing, especially what made it more funny was hearing Madonna's version of Living on a Prayer, which was amazing. And just all the other Deadpool, except one 
that apparently owned Dogpool, but he was a supposedly nice Deadpool, that he could not regenerate. All the other ones could. And then we see the only thing that saves them is Peter apparently being Deadpool and stopping them. And they went all over him because, you know, he, they love him. And then we see where they stop Cassandra by controlling the timelines and actually fixing it between Wolverine and Deadpool. And they save the timeline and they arrest um, the one that was in the TVA. And they're finally getting it back on track. So it seems like they're going to allow this Wolverine that was supposedly the worst Wolverine to be in this universe with Deadpool. And what was, again, Peter, again, having to say, oh, well, he's here too. You know, they're like, well, who are you? And it's like, again, and then you see one of the ones just getting all worked up over him. And again, I know it was supposed to be funny. Same thing with him having to save Deadpool and Wolverine but again I felt like it was not necessary because again I don't think Peter was that much of an important character because he wasn't even that much of an important character even in the second movie because technically he died and he got brought back because of Wade so again it's just it, it's funny but it's kind of like a stupid funny I guess you'd say but I'm not too mad about that um then of course the very end it, we see where I guess Wolverine is going to be possibly living with Deadpool at this point and we see everyone having a meal and pretty much how it ends is it looks like Deadpool is going to be with Wolverine in the house and we see him and Vanessa you know trying to work things out and then we also see X-23 aka you know Daphne King with Hume Jackman again so I'm assuming that she got out because again Deadpool did bring up to the ones the TVA like hey you know can we bring this up can can you know I made a promise that we can get some ones out of here and she says let me see what I can do so obviously they got her out so where can we bring back Gambit can we bring back Blade can we bring back Elektra guys I'm gonna tell you this I'd love to see all three of them come back I want to see Gambit come back you know aka Chain Tatum I want to see that I do I want to see uh, Electra, aka Jennifer Garner, return as that character. I want to see what's this time's blade again. Again, I think he did a badass job. The only thing I can say that I wasn't a big fan of for Blade was him having a short, you know, machete type deal. I I'd prefer it if he had his own sword, like he did in the movies. But again, I'm not sure why they went that route. But again, I got over it because again, it was still awesome seeing the Blade I grew up on. And that they keep trying to do a Blade movie and they keep having all these issues. But at the same time, does this go into, did this save the MCU? I will say this. This was, I would say, a, I don't want to say a love letter. I don't want to say an apology. I don't want to say a thank you. I just want to say again, I would say if you're a millennial kid like I am, if you grew up watching the X-Men movies, if you grew up watching Blade movies, you know, um, the Punisher movies, um, the Daredevil movie, the Electra movie, all the movies that were quote unquote fails, I guess you'd say, then you get your, I guess you get a little bit of justice watching this because it makes you remember, hey, they do apparently care about these characters, even though they're in the crapper, so to speak is the way I'm putting it for the void. Same thing for um, all the comments, you know, with Disney and Kevin Feige and then the fourth wall breaking. And again, that's Deadpool. Again, it worked because they were able to make fun of everything. They were able to make fun of each other. Same thing with Hugh Jackman, making fun of each other for what they're doing, how he lost his girlfriend, which again, didn't really make a whole lot of sense because it seemed like that they just put it in the movie just to put it there because, again, it didn't really give a big reason other than it seemed like, again, as he said, he was going through a midlife crisis. So it really didn't give too much of an explanation on why him and Vanessa broke up for however long. And then at the same time, seeing his crew take a back seat like Colossus, Teenage Warhead, all them. Again, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it kind of made you wonder, okay... But again, this was the Deadpool and Wolverine story. And again, I love this movie. I will say again, I love this movie. I think it's a great movie. Um, does it make me feel good to be a Marvel fan? At this point, yes. But at the same time, is this going to make me say, okay, am I ready for other Marvel projects? I don't know. They didn't really do too much to say, hey, we're ready to save the MCU. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up another topic here in a minute. But the main thing that I want to discuss right now is did he save the MCU? Mm, yes and no. I would say more of 
brought hope back into the MCU to like, hey, like, <clears throat> there's a lot of memes going around there of Ryan Reynolds hitting Kevin Feige on the back of the head going, hey, this is how you do a Marvel movie, which is true. Again, you didn't insult the fans. You kept you brought up a lot of comic book accurates in here. It was funny, had action and adventure, and brought up a lot of characters that people love. Now, again, was there characters in here I would like to see? Yeah, there's characters in here I would like to see. I was hoping we get to see Charles Xavier. I was hoping we get to see Magneto. I was hoping maybe we would see Storm or um, you know. Iceman or Rogue or, or something. I mean, just, just different things from the X-Men movies. Because, again, I grew up on the X-Men movies. But we didn't. And you know what? That's fine. I'm happy with the cameos we got. But another thing I want to go ahead and say before I end the video is I did put out a video uh, about Day or So Ago about how apparently there are people getting upset about some of the references to, Mar to you know, Deadpool being, oh, Marvel Jesus. Again, guys, saving the MCU. I'm just going to leave it at that. Same thing for Wolverine Beyond the Cross. That was in the comics. So get over yourself. Come on. It's been there for years. And again, it just it's silly to me on how... Some, it, it just it baffles me on when you try to go in and you know it's going to be a good movie and other people ruin it or try to ruin it because of their own beliefs, whether it be religion or politics. And again, it's either people that do that, that work on the film or fans or other people. And it's like, again, why can't, if it's going to be a good movie, let it be a good movie. It's going to be a crappy movie. Let it be a crappy movie. And, and that's all I got to say. But again, would I watch this movie? Yes, I would. I'll definitely watch it again. Um, there was a lot of moments in here that made me laugh very hard. I had to make sure I was paying attention to every little detail that was being said. And same thing for all the Easter eggs, all the cam cameos. And out of all three so far, which one's my favorite? I still like the first one. First one's amazing. Second one, not as good as this one or the first one, in my opinion. I think the second one is at the bottom of the list for the Deadpool movies, in my opinion. But I've been talking long enough, guys. What is your opinion of Deadpool and Wolverine? Let me know down in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll be seeing you guys, as always, on the very next one.